so we're just waiting. Well, we're just hanging loose, waiting for the famous Carrie Kelly to give us a call in the Times. Well, anyways, we're waiting for uh, Carrie Kelly to call. She'll be calling any minute now, and uh, he can tell us all about what's upcoming with him. You know, I have several questions for him that I'd like to ask. I'd like to ask about states of the underground. <laughs> Band members Bobby Blotzer, Robbie Crane, and uh, Janie uh, Lane. Hello, Timothy Spider. How can I help you, sir? Hey, Kim, it's Carrie Kelly here. Hey, Carrie, how are you, sir? I'm doing pretty good, man. How about yourself, my man? Oh, we're rocking right along here. Um, I, I, I got Very your, good. I got your email. I just got out of bed myself. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm just kind of well, shook, shook it off. Um, cool. You want, will you want to do this thing or want me to call you back in like five or ten minutes? No, this is cool right now. We're, uh, we're live on the air right now if you'd like to talk. All right, absolutely, man. Let's do it. Okay, um, I received an email from you that you guys are getting a new release going on with Big Bang Babies. Um, and I wanted to find out a little more about that, and that's why I emailed you back. Um, yeah, well, you know... Uh, Basically, what that is, in, in a nutshell, is uh, that was a, it, it actually was an old project that I had when I was a wee young rocker uh, of like 19 years old, and uh, you know, we lived up in, in Hollywood and did the whole, you know, Hollywood hoopla that you've probably seen on the good old Decline of Western Civilization, the Metal Years movie, and, uh, and all that, so we were definitely having our share of a good time, but you know, we had a, a cool little band called Big Bang Babies that I had put together, and um, you know, we gave it a shot for a few years and nothing really happened uh, on a national level, but, you know, on a local level, we did, you know, pretty good business. And, uh, you know, my buddy uh, Tom over at Paris Records, who I had known for literally like 20 years, um, he had a, this Paris Records company that he does, and he goes, hey, man, let's, why don't you put some of those songs together that you had, you know, demos laying around and put something out. And I said, all right, let's do it. So we actually did that. Uh, it's been about five years or so since it's actually the hard copy record out. But now, um, you know, you got to embrace, embrace technology, embrace the digital age, you know. We're here and now he has the album available in all the various digital networks. So, uh, you know, iTunes, etc. One click of a button and 99 cents you could buy whatever songs you want. So, you know, so that's it. So it's out. It's all over the world. One click of a button. Get on your iTunes get that Big Bang Baby record. There you go. That's sweet, dude. Um, yeah. I'm really interested in that because I remember, actually, because like I, I'm, I'm about the same age as you are, and yeah. I was cruising the market then as a lead guitarist, because I'm a lead guitarist of the band, Wet Thing, um, here in Chicago, and we made it to a certain level. Um, we were able to actually open for one of the bands that you uh, played with, and I don't know if you were playing with them back in 2000, with Skid Row. Um, uh, oh, very good. Yeah, no, those guys are my brothers, of course. Um, I actually was not playing with him at that point. Um, I was playing with Slash during that period. But Skid Row, great guys, uh, incredible band. These guys are my brothers, man. Yeah, uh, they're they're phenomenal. We we've been com we've been talking via email about uh, this other band that you got together with Bobby Blotz um, and uh, Janie Lane and those guys yeah. from Rat. Um, and uh, that's called Saints of the Underground. Yes, sir. And uh, I'm really interested in that. I was checking out your music, and I find it very intriguing. Um, how did that all turn about in your career? Um, in 99, I played with, in the 98, 99, I played in rap. Obviously, I, I knew Bob. Um, but during that same period, um, I was writing a lot of songs with Janie. Um, we were going to do a side project, and we didn't know what we were doing. We were just writing a lot of songs together. Um, and then, uh, the starting of 2000, uh, Piercy, Stephen Piercy, the singer of Rat, had some falling out with the other guys, and, and we, Rat, didn't have a singer at the time, so Janie asked me to go out and play with Warren, so I, I did that, so we became, you know, better friends than just songwriting partners or whatever, and, uh, Anyway, so it was one big happy family, you know, I knew the rack guys, Janie had known uh, those guys for years, and then I'm in the mix and whatever, and um, one day, years later, obviously, regarding the Saints Project, um, we got an offer, somebody said, hey, you guys, we used to go out and do these jam gigs, just for fun, 
um, and we just play covers and stuff, and, and uh, the same band, pretty much, you know, just Janie and me and Bob and, and Robbie Crane on bass, same band, we go out and play Thin Lizzy stuff, Led Zeppelin, Stones, you know, whatever it may be, um, and then one day, somebody came up to us, record company, said, hey, you guys interested in doing a, a real full-length, you know, original record, and we go, hell, we never really thought of it, but sounds good, so... Uh, J.D. and I basically got together at my house, wrote a bunch of songs, um, we wrote a couple songs with Bob as well, and then we just, we cut it, we cut most of the record at my house, cut the drums over at Bob's house, and then um, we got Andy Johns to mix it, who's uh, a legend, um, you know, Led Zeppelin Records, Van Halen, you know, the list of oh, them yes. on the new Chicken Foot record, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and we did it, so it was a really fun little simple project to do for us, and it was, and it was fun, and, uh, I think it's a, some really good songs on there, which is, is, is the bottom line, you know, cool songs. Yeah, that, that, that's very awesome. Now, I, I have a, a lead vocalist here is also my wife. It's Aura Flanagan, uh, yep. and she she has a question about you, uh, Hi, for you. Hi, Aura. Hi, how are you? I'm doing good, babe. How are you doing? Uh, I'm still alive. Still I'm alive here in, uh, in uh, where are we? We are in Berlin, Germany, as we speak. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Man. The question is, I heard you did a couple of things on Vampire, uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah, that was back in the good old days. No, that was, uh, you know, I mean, when you're a song, I've always been like the guy in the band that had, um, you know, like a recording studio and things like that. So I, right. you know, back at, like we were talking, the Big Bang Babies days when I was a, a, a wee young lad, I had like the four-track recorder, then the eight-track, then right. the sixteen-track, then the Pro Tools. Now, so I was always writing songs and recording and things like that. So at one point you go, wow, well, what am I going to do with all these songs that are sitting around? And, um, you know, then you hear, oh, well, people place those songs in movies or in TV or TV commercials or this or that. Right. So, uh, cool. yeah, so basically I, I just had... Uh, you know, I, I sent a bunch of my material around to some of my friends in, in the industry and see if they could play some songs. So I got some placements on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Sounds fantastic. To, um, yeah, so they were, on the, the, yeah, they were originally just on the episodes um, when they originally aired, but then the show got so popular that they obviously ended up putting them out on DVD and things like that, so you just make more money, more money off of, off of these kind of things. Um, you know, but I got some placements in some movies and some TV commercials for American Express and Very good. you know things like that. So it's you know all those little things add up, and it's uh you know you sound no, like a big, you're you working sound you're, you're a working musician. You know what I mean? I'm right here, you're like a busy guy to me. I was on divorce uh, court. Tr try to make it happen. <laughs> right. I was on divorce court. <laughs> I'm just joking with you. <laughs> I was on divorce court. <laughs> we were out in L.A. last June. Uh, was that last June we were out there? Yeah. Yeah, we were out in uh, L.A. last year in June playing a spoof on uh, Divorce Court. We decided that we'd go on there and uh, get our faces on TV. <laughs> uh, the big... No. All right, so you're still married, though. Oh, yeah, the big the big thing was I... I, 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 I kidnapped all the cups out of the house and kept them in the car, and I wasn't going to bring them in until she admitted the Fender guitars stink. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what is, yeah, what is your favorite guitar to play on? I myself, I'm I'm a Gibson guy, Jackson guy. Uh, yeah, you know, um, I mean, I think every guitar is different. It really depends on um, what your your you know what you're recording or whatever. Or, or you know, live is not as important as what you're is when you're recording. I mean, every guitar kind of has its own kind of a sound. You know, I mean, Les Paul sounds different than an SG, an SG is thinner sounding, a little bit more mid-range sounding, you know, and those guitars sound different from a Fender Strat, those sound different than a, from a Telecaster, etc. So, in the studio, it's more vital, you know, or a 335, you know, if you're playing a, a hollow body or a semi-hollow body, it's all about the tonality that you're trying to go for. Um, exactly, I hear that. But, yeah, but live, live is kind of just like, you know, it's a, kind of a different animal. You can almost play any guitar live and be able to cover the parts properly. In the studio, it's more of a thing for me about the tone that you want to get and what you're trying to, to you know, capture. So it, it just all varies. I mean, I have probably, I don't even know how many guitars I have, probably 50, 60, or 70 of them. <laughs> yeah. But they're, you know, I have, I have like a main, main probably six or eight guitars in my, in my control room that I just go to. You know, and I know, oh, okay, I need the 335, okay, I need the uh, SG, I need the, you know, 
Les Paul. So I think as long as you have one of one of all those guitars in your arsenal, you should be covered. That's right. I've I got guess you can never have too many <laughs> guitars, huh? No, no. Well, one no of way, one, baby. One of, yeah, one of every one of every style. I think you'll be you know, you're covered. You know. You're good to go. There you go. There you go. Listen, um, you you've worked with Alice Cooper for a number of years now, and we we caught you guys. I do believe you were playing, and I uh, at the uh, Star Plaza in yeah. Indiana, <clears throat> and. Uh, we caught your show there, um, and Alice came out, and he signed uh, a vintage record that Alice had that she was giving away for uh, a birthday present to her brother. Um, very nice. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was very nice of Alice to do that, too. I was not expecting that of him. Uh, I mean, you run across uh, rockers that have little or no time for their fans from time to time, you know what I mean? But he yeah. he definitely stopped. You guys were definitely very uh, congenial, and you stopped and you you talked with the people, and uh, you, you were just very nice people to hang oh, with. Thank you, you know. very much. And uh, I got a very warm feeling from you guys uh, when I met you. I've met other bands and stuff where it's just like you know you get in the cold finger. Um, yeah. And uh, but you guys, I mean, and and I think that has a lot to do with why you guys have been so successful in your careers is, is because of the type of person that you are you know you yeah no I, I, def, I, I understand what you're saying completely I mean, I, <coughs> I've dealt with obviously many many a personality in my uh, rock and roll travels you know and uh, um, you know I mean the way I look at it like I said I mean, I, I'm just trying to be a survivor I'm out there doing my thing and uh, you know you got to every day is, is take a day at a time and stuff but but it, it's really it, it's something something that has to be said for guys like Alice that have been in this business for so long yet they're still so grounded and so mellow and, and, and they're into it and they love performing and they obviously love the fans and the whole nine yards I mean Alice has no attitude whatsoever you know what I run into it seems like sometimes the bigger the musicians are uh, a lot of times the less of the attitude they have I mean guys like whether it's Flash or I've hung out with Steven Tyler before or um, I mean whoever I mean just, the list goes on and on I mean, the Stones we played shows with the Stones with Alice hung out with those guys they're like the coolest dudes like they're hey, like your neighbor or something you don't even know these guys but they're treating you know, like every like you're just one you know one of them which I'm saying of course you are but some people might think that they should have an attitude but they really don't that's what I've come across so right right well I, you know I never really as a musician I, I never really tripped on an ego type thing I was just, you know, I, I mean, you know, when I was in the bars and just doing the bars, the bar roll, a lot of the bands were like in this uh, real competition groove thing. You know, there's one yeah. really neat thing about you that I, I have contacted a lot of musicians out there uh, to join us on the show, come out to, we've been talking about you coming out with uh, Saints of the Underground to perform out at Wet Thing Haven um, and trying to work something out there. And um, there were very few musicians that would even talk to me in that regard. Um, and I, that's, I think that's the neatest thing that I find about you uh, as a person is, is that you do try to connect with your friends and fans. And I think you treat your fans more like they're friends. Absolutely. And yeah, like I said, I mean, I, I just, you know, do what I do and just, I'm, happen to be a musician, you know, but I'm a working musician, and like I said, I just do day by day, just, uh, you know, just do it, man, try and have a good time and, and survive, man. And so, let me say, you, I do it, you do it well. I've heard you. Oh, you thanks. are one fantastic guitar player. Thank you very much. And I've heard many of them. Definitely. <laughs> so we're looking forward to uh, the Big Bang Babies, right? Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, man, like Get onto your iTunes or your Rhapsody or, or all the other little digital networks and, and uh, click it up and go check out a song for 99 cents. Right. Gary dot com. I've got all the all the latest news and gossip and tour dates and photos and merchandise and yada 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 on there. So fantastic. Yeah. 